Hello, welcome to my Yu-Gi-Oh! channel. So I've seen a lot of people discussing the hot topic that is Pot of Disparity. I think from the design of it, it looks really good. And actually, I wanted to give my views on what I think will be involved in the future and whether I see this card as being viable, if at all. This is a normal spell card with the effect you can only activate one card with this card's name per turn. You cannot draw any cards with card effects during the turn you activate this card. One, banish three or six cards from your extra deck. Face down, excavate that same number of cards from the top of your deck and one of them to your hand. Place the rest on the bottom of your deck in any order. For the rest of this turn, after this card resolve half any damage your opponent takes. So I'm quite mixed on this and that it has quite a few benefits but quite a few problems to it as well. The whole thing about banishing three or six cards from your extra deck is dependent on what type of deck you're running. If you're running one of these high combo decks such as Synchro or Link Climbing or even Xyz Climbing deck, this is not the card for you. Banishing even three of those cards, um, even though you get to choose, might be a problem when you can only run one of certain cards. And the other problem is that people are banging on the door for Konami to expand the extra deck space as it is. If you can't spare three cards, how are you going to face you now dealing with potentially six as well? Of course, them being face down as when they're banished means that I think they're pretty much unrecoverable, so there's no way of you getting back to them. I suppose the good thing is that you get to dig deeper into your deck. You get to find a specific card you can have um, without having to wait for any sort of restrictions. I mean, things like Old Sarcophagus and Different Dimension Capsule require you to wait a couple of turns in in order to use that effect. That means that you're having to stall until you get that card and especially in the case of different dimension caps that can be destroyed which means you don't get that card back. Um, you don't actually actually have to wait for this card. It Once it resolves you get that card and then you can activate it as and when you want uh, provided you meet the condition. Uh, the other thing about placing the rest of the cards on the bottom of the deck isn't a problem because you will probably be running different cards which shuffle your deck anyway. You'll be seeing some of those cards at some point. Even alternatively, if you look at something like Convulsion of Nature, I know that's very trolly, based, very cheesy, but actually it flips your deck around so you could actually end up drawing into the cards you want. The problem is that Convulsion of Nature makes your deck face up, which means your opponent can see exactly what you're drawing and then they will try and set the pace for the duel going forward. Other downside is that it does for the rest of the turn how many damage your opponent takes. This is a massive downside if you're using cards such as Grim Marju Daiza, which actually benefit, I think it's 400 times the number of banished cards you have. Um, so their whole point is to OTK, get uh, your opponent not being able to respond and going in for a big punch to the face. Um, you can't really do that with this. Um, it halves the battle damage. I, I, I would say it's better than what it could have been. It could have been zero damage for the rest of the turn, in which case it would be dead to those decks. At least in this way, if you, you were able to uh, reduce your opponent's life points previous to this, you might still win within that same turn. But it is all types of damage, so it's both battle and effect damage. Also makes it a bit of concern. The other thing is it being once per turn isn't also an issue. I would see it's better to do that because otherwise, ridiculously, you're going to be looking through 15 cards of your deck. It's too much and it's not a good idea if there are certain cards and certain archetypes that would benefit too much from this card being like that. That's why I think it's balanced enough. I think this is actually Konami using their brains here. They've actually reviewed the card, they've balanced, they've checked, play tested, they understand the ins and outs of this card. And they've leveled it to a way where people can use it but not abuse it. That's how I see it. I don't see it being a massively expensive card, but knowing what they're like as well with Blazing Vortex, they will probably make this a super rare or a secret rare, you know, short printed. It's probably going to be like $80, some ridiculous amount of money. So for a playset that's $240 maybe even more, uh, depending on how many people jump on the hype train. Whether they do or not depends on how they are, but for me personally, I'm not willing to spend that type of money. I would rather actually try and get it through sheer luck. Just buy a booster box, see where it goes. If I get it, I get it. If I don't, I don't. What are you going to do? Are your plans to do the same as me? Uh, if, if you are, test your luck, see how lucky you are, see if you're fortunate enough, because you can put one of them or a couple of them, you're in the money, you've made back your money, and you're in profit. Congratulations, not hard luck, sometimes these things happen. Whatever you think, leave comments down below, like the video if you enjoyed it, and don't forget to subscribe.